good evening and welcome my friends this time from our little studio my studio my little workshop where I prepare most of my homilies and talks and studies for you and on this beautiful evening of the fourth Sunday of Lent when we are separated physically we still try to stay connected spiritually we, st we try to stay connected with Jesus Christ, with Heavenly Father, through our prayer. And thanks to digital media, we try to challenge one another to pray even more in this time of need. Who knew that several weeks ago, on Ash Wednesday, when many of you were receiving ashes from the burned palms, and when priest was imposing ashes on our foreheads, he would say, Man, woman, remember that you are dust, and unto dust you shall return. Wow! Who knew that these words would have such a different meaning this land, when entire world for months, and now for weeks, the United States of America combats this deadly coronavirus epidemics. My friends, in times of need, naturally, we reach out. We try to assure one another that we care, that we trust one another, that we pray for one another. And first of all, I wanted to tell you, as part of tonight's, tomorrow's reflection for our nine o'clock family mass here at St. Thomas the Apostle Church in Norwalk, I wanted to thank you and your children for so many beautiful, beautiful prayers and pictures you send our way. That challenge issued by our religious education center to stay connected through prayer in this time of need, time of darkness, has, has been beautifully received by you, by your children. Daily, we are receiving pictures, comments of how your children share the word of God beautiful holy cards that you make for our senior citizens, homebound, disabled, those parishioners in nursing homes, and we will mail them every few days to them. But I wanted to share with you just few of those beautiful comments by your children on the Word of God. Gardiel says, I forgive you. God is merciful. God says to me, I forgive you. Ryan says, God did not come to abolish law and prophets, the Old Testament, but to fulfill it. And Ryan says again, God says, get rid of your denial and open your heart for God. Kylie says, I think God is saying to cast nets really deep, on deep water, to witness a miracle. And Julie says, I think God is saying, trust me. Wow, my friends, this is to me a very clear sign how Holy Spirit works through your children. Continue that. You see how powerful agents of the Holy Spirit your children are. Ask them to pray for you to pray for your mom and dad, for their grandparents, because God listens to children. And then also, as we continue with our meditation upon the Gospel of St. John, remember last Sunday, we read this beautiful story of Jesus encountering woman, Samaritan woman at the well in the middle of the desert. How Jesus says, I am the fresh living water and then today we continue on the fourth Sunday of Lent with the Gospel of John, this time with chapter 9. And in today's Gospel, today's parable, Jesus heals the blind man, restores sight to the blind. Imagine how difficult it must have been not to be able to see all this beauty surrounding us the world, colors, splendor of it. 
all the things we take for granted. One who is struck with blindness day and night lives in darkness. And Jesus not only cures that, the physical blindness, restores the sight, but he also heals the heart heals the heart of everyone who is willing to open wide that heart before Jesus. He has the capability and most of all desire to make me, to make you holy again, whole again, new again. Today, good Lord says on those pages from the Gospel of John that he is the light of the world. Preceding chapter, chapter 8 of the Gospel of John, Jesus speaks those powerful, beautiful words. I am the light of the world. Whoever believes in me will never walk in darkness, will always be part of this kingdom of light. Trust that. Believe that. Tell your children that. That no matter how thick the darkness is, how much of unknown is ahead of us. Jesus believes in us, even if sometimes we don't believe in him. He believes that we will open our hearts for him so his light can dispel any darkness of doubt, of fear, of indifference. You see, your children will be learning tomorrow morning with our organist and vocalist that beautiful chant, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Say those words often. Pray with your children. I can't thank you enough for all the prayers you already shared with us. This time of difficulty, separation, will come to an end. We will gather again at our nine o'clock family mass with you and your children, and believe me, I miss you, I miss you dearly. One of the most difficult parts in the life of the priest is not only visiting the oncology floors of local, maybe Norwalk hospital or the local hospices when so much suffering is happening, but it's this, is missing you, parishioners, people, not to be able to celebrate sacrament, share my faith with you. It's extremely difficult, so thank you for making this possible through digital media. I pray for you every day. I pray for your mom and dad, for you, dear children, for your parents, grandparents, everyone close and dear to you. I encourage you every day, devote some time to prayer. It doesn't have to be long. Few minutes with your children. Stay connected spiritually to Christ Jesus. God bless you. And I will see you hopefully very soon again.